Greetings Android users. This is Reverend Kyle with yet another video tutorial. Today we're going to address a uh, very much requested item and that is if I have gotten my phone uh, to the point where I need to flash it back to its original stock uh, ROM, uh, how do I do that? Uh, so what we're going to do here is we need three essential pieces installed onto our computer. Uh, again, just to remind you all, I am running Windows 7 64-bit Ultimate. Uh, not everybody is running that, so be aware that there might be some adjustments necessary depending on which computer operating system you are running. So first of all, there are going to be three files that we need. One of them is the original ROM itself. Uh, <clears throat> I've given a link to this file in the description of the video. Uh, that link is subject to change uh, depending on Motorola's mood or um, Mega Upload's mood. So be aware that if this file goes away, uh, you may have to venture out into the wilderness of Google and find it again on your own. Uh, the one that I have downloaded is from uh, Mega Upload, and again, there's a link here to it. Um, this is the Cincinnati Bell 2.1 Eclair stock ROM. It is in an SBF format, and uh, it is roughly 180 megabytes. So the link in the description is to this file here. So the next file we need is going to be RSD Lite, uh, version 4.6 is the one uh, I choose to use. I know that there are some earlier and later versions out there. It's up to you what you want to use. I just happen to use version 4.6. Uh, this program can be gotten off of 4Shared, and again, there's a link to this in the description of the video itself. Uh, I'm not going to download this again. I've already downloaded it once. Uh, just for you rookies out there uh, who haven't downloaded anything from 4Shared, the Download Now No Viruses Detected button is the one you want to click on, and then there is a 20-second wait, and then it will pop up. So I'm going to close this one now. Uh, the third and final file that we need is the Motorola Milestone Phone USB Drivers <clears throat> that is uh, available again from Motorola's webpage and I've put a link to it in the description. Uh, we are going to click on here, uh, download the driver with Moto Helper, save it and off we go. So assuming that you've done those three things, uh, you should have three files now, the SPF file of your choice, the RSD Lite program and then the drivers. Uh, I'm going to start off uh, just for simplicity's sake with the drivers. Uh, I'm going to run this file and I'm going to select English because that's what I speak and next and I agree and uh, I've already installed these so this installation may have been quicker than what you would experience on yours and then I'm going to close. So those drivers are now loaded. From here, uh, next is to extract and load RSD Lite. It's an MSD file, or I'm sorry, an MSI file. I'm going to extract that to my desktop. And uh, I've already got it there, so I'm just going to copy over for simplicity's sake. And that is right here. So there's the MSI file. Welcome to RSD Lite setup. Next, agree. Whoops next agree next copy it to the standard program files directory and this is a rather small program so the installation shouldn't take that long this will give you the capability of fixing your phone if you get into the notorious boot loop or you've flashed incorrectly or you just really don't feel comfortable with having uh, something on your phone other than the stock item. There are several SBF files available out there for the different phones. Uh, please be aware there are different SBFs and you must use the one that is necessary for your phone. Uh, if you're not sure which one is for your phone, please do some research before just guessing. Uh, I guess there is always the possibility of bricking the phone, although I have personally never had any problems with bricking phones, uh, but I have heard situations where others have. Okay, so this is telling us to make sure we have the right drivers, which we've already installed those, next, and close. <clears throat> so now I have 
RSD light uh, basically uh, installed on the computer and uh, I can start that up here. Eventually what I'll end up doing is <clears throat> plugging the phone in after I've put it into boot loader mode and uh, essentially the phone will get picked up. Now I'm not going to show it. Uh, I'll, I'll actually I'll probably skip over to that in the video. I'm going to put my phone into bootloader mode now. Okay, for the sake of this video, I have gotten my phone stuck in a Motorola boot loop. So there is actually, uh, this has been sitting like this, cycling with pretty much doing nothing for, uh, I would say, a good five minutes. Uh, so in, there's actually nothing you can do about this, no matter what you do. If you pull the battery or if you turn it off, turn it back on, it's not going to work. So, we've already gotten our computer installed and ready to go, and now it's just time to flash. The first thing we need to do is actually get the phone into bootloader mode. So I'm going to take the back panel off and take the battery out. This is where it gets a little tricky. Uh, for this particular model, the Milestone XT720, it requires a very large amount of finesse to be able to put this into bootloader mode. Uh, you actually have to hit the camera shutter, the down volume, and the power button all at the same time while installing the battery. That is what you actually have to do. Uh, I've actually learned to use my ring finger and my, let's see here, my ring finger my index finger for those two and then I usually get the battery ready hold the power button and then put the battery in and you'll see what happens is it boots up and there we have it so uh, <laughs> again this takes some finesse. Uh, this is not something that you're going to be able to do the first time. And uh, just to give you an idea, I'll flip over to my macro mode so you can see that it shows it's ready for the data cable. And then uh, we're going to plug the data cable in and then the computer will recognize it and uh, then you'll be able to flash it. Okay, so now my phone is in bootloader mode and I am actually going to plug it in. And you're going to see what occurs. So I plugged it in and it's installing the device driver software. Uh, just to show you what it's, sh it should be installing OMAP. Uh, this is the actual processor from the phone, the OMAP 3430. Uh, it's installing the driver software now. And the phone itself is uh, pretty much just sitting there idle, ready, waiting for RSD light to be ready to use. So once this happens, you'll notice, ta-da, there it is, it says that it's connected, and I can click show device, actually it's, there it is, okay. So um, from here, uh, I'm going to go in, I'm gonna select my SBF file, which is right here, and open, and then I can hit start, and it will go through the process. Now. I'm not actually going to flash it right now. Uh, I'm just showing you the steps to get to it. Uh, I will show you the steps to actually flash in uh, the next video. So uh, as it stands right now, if you've done everything that I've done here, you should have RSD Lite installed, the proper drivers installed, and uh, you know how to put your, uh, if you have the Milestone XT720, you know how to get it into bootloader mode and allow the computer to recognize it. Uh, from here, uh, all you would have to do is hit start and it would flash the phone to your um, to your 2.1 SPF that I've downloaded. Uh, so be sure to check out my other videos to see what happens next.